What's happened to your neck? SL7. Uh, I don't know. I think the lad hit something. The bike snapped in half. That bit tore into his leg. Yeah, it wasn't nice. There's blood on there. Wow. It's so thin, isn't it? It is thin, isn't it? <laughs> it's really, really, really thin. Specialized we're using a factory in El Salvador and to make clothing along with like Gildan and some other brands that are not cycling specific. The factory went bust. The workers did not get paid their last like few months of wages and all of the companies then chipped in to give money to the workers, but Specialized didn't. So the workers all have like, there's photos of them holding up signs like Specialized, please pay us. Because obviously they get a great deal going abroad for work. Um, you know, it costs them, cost Specialized a lot less. So, specialized, you might want to pay them. They don't legally have to, but they might want to. Let's see. Like, practically a vegetarian now. Chicken's not real meat. Bit of bacon. Cheers, Steve. So in the previous video, we talked about Crank Brothers pedals being fully serviceable pedal for life. So if I asked Meg, can she send me a series? Because all the different ones have different levels of stuff you can replace. So the lovely Meg has sent us a whole host of her demo display pedals, which we can take apart and put back together. So obviously we won't break them. But yeah, um, ideally I want to see if I can take these gold titanium spindles out and put them inside of my pedals. Kind of switch and swap around, you can change colors of things. Um, if you look at these are the basic the ones, so that's a plastic body. So that is, you can replace quite a bit of it, but some of it is just a whole piece where if you go up to something like the sevens, these are two separate parts. So you can replace that, you can replace this, the axle, the bearings, even these contact patches can be changed. So what I'm going to try and do is, because I haven't done one yet, is just take one apart as far as possible and see, see how they compare. So yeah, um, it's just me messing about the pedals. Um, it's probably part of the job I like most. Um, yeah, it's not, probably not the most exciting for everybody, but for me it's, yeah. In theory, you can just take all these bits and also build yourself different pedals. So I have heard that if you were to take, for instance, this one, which is the 11, that's got a titanium axle. So that's the lightest axle. But the one has the lightest body because that's plastic. So possibly take this, build it onto this body to try and make it lighter. Not that it matters, just try and see what is possible. But I can see obviously these spindles are different size to those to so see what's... I'm just curious. Let's see what we can do with it. Socket. Is reverse thread or not? I will quickly find out. No, normal thread. This is the... Right side pedal. It comes out. Goes there. Goes there. This one goes there. That one goes there. That one goes there. That one goes there. There. Have you ever taken one of these pedals oh. apart before? No. <laughs> I've just been told that it's possible. So there we go. There's a bit out. And there's O rings in there. That goes in there. Actually, we'll go this way around, so we remember which way to put it back in. There's a bushing in there, and a seal. That seal comes out on this side. Okay, so that's all done in there. I'm assuming that'll come apart as well, but I'm not going to mess with that today. Because that spring is quite... Wait. Quite tight. So if you really wanted to, you could take this apart further? Uh, I'm not 100% sure. 
<clears throat> I'm gonna have to look into that for you. But realistically, that's not really gonna go wrong, is it? No, but I mean, you can that's replace the whole thing. I just don't know if you get it with the color or if you can take it apart, but I assume with the strength of the spring, taking it apart would be some job. What I would suggest is if you ever take anything apart, like we've just done that, not knowing anything, um, maybe first check if you can get a diagram, see how it goes back together. If not, take it apart in a sequence so you can look at what it comes apart as and then when you need to put it back together, you're not too worried about trying to figure out how it goes back together. I even do a thing of anything that goes into something else on this side, I, I put the that side down so then I know that slips into there, slips onto that, slips onto this, that goes in there, that way, same thing. What's the plan? I'm trying to put it back together. Um, obviously, I'd like to just rush it, but I think now let's just do it properly. So uh, we're not going to do an arm and put your rifle together? After I've done a couple, we can do that. But for now, let's just put it back together. Um, not rush it too much, because I need it to work afterwards, I mean. But it'll be interesting to see how difficult it is. I don't think it'll be difficult at all, but yeah. You ready? Let's go. That one goes back in there. This is the first time I've put one of these back together. Well, it's the first time I've taken one apart, so I'll drop that in. Oops, oh, it's not going well. I'm trying to rush it here because of you. Put pressure on me. Push that back in there. This one. That back in there. For all I know, we're doing this all wrong, but I'll we'll see if it doesn't work on there. That one then pops into there. That one pops into there. That can spin. Uh, this bit pops in here. And we will stick this bolt in there, straight through. Straight it a little bit. I don't know why I'm giving you running commentary, but I suppose. Concentration. Ta-da. Next, we should take my pedals apart, see what they look like after a few months of riding. Yeah. What? As long as I know I can put this one back together, we can take mine apart. <laughs> what enduro bearings do they run in these pedals? Uh, I think those are just normal Epic 3s by the look of it. So um, they're not XT13? No, I mean XT15 bearings at that size would be obscenely expensive. The main thing is just that it's when they do wear out, you can replace them. Do uh, so most pedals you can't replace things? I think a lot of them you can, but it's just finding spares and stuff. I mean, we were looking at servicing a time pedal and none of the tools are available. Look and all of them say you can, but it's just a thing of, it's a big difference between them saying you can and them having the parts available to do it. I think it's back on there. This one. Okay, this one. I suppose the easy thing would be as long as there's no parts lying around when we're done, we know we've won. Perfect. That spins around. Fixed? Excellent, yeah. Obviously, when you do this properly, you put some more grease and stuff in. <clears throat> but because we're going to be taking these apart a few more times, I've not greased anything. Um, but yeah, that's simple enough. So these are the Candy 11s. Uh, that's a top of the range, like lightweight pedal. Uh, it's equivalent to, sorry, Candy's, Egg Beater 11s. These are the Candy 11s. Um, that's the top of the range pedals they make. These are titanium axles. I'm just curious to see if they look any different inside. So it's all a very similar principle in terms of very that comes out. Into. Yeah. That goes in there. This goes in there again. Switch that. Wait to do it. Like that. Yeah, same bearing again, same size. So all the pedals use the same bearing pretty much? Uh, yes, but the outside looks at it. I'll double check with Endura to see if it's different grades, but I don't think it will be because they're quite well sealed. They're in there. 
that goes back in. This axle, <coughs> once again, that is considerably lighter. Right. I think we should take these out. I'll stick them into my pedals, make them even lighter. I'm actually quite keen to kind of take all the different bits Makes and swap them around. Let's do this now, actually. So we've taken them out. Take a set of these candy ones again. Take that out. And see if they're the same size. Part separate from each other. Take this off, slide that out. Okay. Uh, this axle is. No, I think that's pretty much the same. So let's see if we can fit this one into this one. Wish we can. Tighten it up. Got like the lightest setup. Nice. As far as I know. I mean, I don't think this is endorsed by them to do, but it's worth. Okay. Now we've made it considerably lighter. I think we need to invest in some scales, but I think that's lighter than that. So it's like, that's the top of the range. Yeah, this is the entry this level. This is the one. entry level. With the entry level, it's the axles. with the axle yeah, yeah. of the top of the range. But I mean, I think from beginning, yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't think you should buy these because that's lighter. I think you buy something like the 7 is probably what I'd recommend. Um, and the big aspect of this is that everything on that's replaceable. So that's the last set of pedals you ever have to buy. Um, saying that, with this, if you buy it and you look after a really long time, the body eventually will wear out. Uh, if you go up from the 1 to the 2, or the three, um, that's a metal body, so that'll be slightly more durable. But obviously, if you strike something, yeah, it'll still damage. But you can buy new bodies for it. Where this one and this one, every single bow is individual. So even if you hit that side, you wouldn't buy a whole body, you just buy that. If you hit that end cap, you just get a new one of them. Pedals for life. I think the next thing we'll do is we'll stick mine on your bike, and then you do something like I think your next thing is the pilgrimage, stick it on your bike and then ride it, bring it back, or we'll strip them down and see what they look like. After I've had them for a few months, you've ridden with them, and then, yeah. See if anything's... Pedals for life. Pedals for life. The other big thing about the pedals is not just the serviceability of it, but they come with four different cleats you can get for them. So, easy release, long release, also with float and without float. So, it essentially caters for everybody, whether you want float or no float. I like my pedals to take like, I need my ankle to move quite far before I unclip because if I bunny hop generally, or try to bunny hop, I, I generally unclip my feet for some reason. Um, it's an issue as well when I sprint sometimes. So these are just much better for that. And the other big thing is these side panels integrate to the shoe a lot better. So the engagement with the pedal is much more. So you don't get side to side rocking in your feet. So it's much better for my knees. Um, but also if you've got big feet, you've just got a much better engagement. Um, yeah, they're just nice to ride. I, I just don't know why they do stupid stuff like this. Who? Specialized. So you need to put a DI2 cable in here. It needs to go through there. But to take this out, you have to take this bolt out. They couldn't even bother to put thread in there. So you've got a little shim that sits on the inside of the frame. And you have to put the bolt through. But you have to, like, fishing line wire, get that to the right space. So that you can then, from the inside, put this bolt through but with the cable through on the outside. But the bolts are too short. I know there must be a trick to this, but I mean like, why overcomplicate stuff? Why half build your bikes? Just why is that not bonded inside the frame to just be there permanently? No amount of money is worth building these things. We should charge double. What kind of bodge job are you doing here? I don't know if this is gonna work, but I'm making my own tool.
it around, but we can do it like so. This most likely will not work, but let's see. Let's try our luck. So now we know that we need it to come up to there. Very carefully slide it in as such. And I need a head torch. Slip that through the hole. It has gone into there. Hold this place. Got this. Now I need to line this side up. I haven't because that's just slipped. I'll go this right in. Finally, we managed to use a longer bolt to catch the thing on the inside while holding with some spokes in place. Now we have to just twist this until we can find this one to line it up. So that one's caught. So we can line this all up, tighten that up. Then this bolt can now be unscrewed. That goes back on with arguably the world's shortest threads ever. Tighten them in. And that is our DI2 cable. In, plug it in there. Now we're starting to figure out whether we're just gonna float the battery inside the CO2, which I'm really not keen on doing. But I'll do some research. <clears throat> if you work in a specialized shop, you've got all my sympathy. Um, yeah. Why? It's just not necessary. I'm not worried about doing extra work, but just glue that in. I mean, the glue's not going to add loads of weight to it, but just glue the inside in instead of doing this. First and last S light we're building, unless you're sensible and putting SRAM wireless groups on there, so I don't have to worry about all these cable nonsense.